Good morning, everyone. Hope you're doing well. Uh, as you recall, we are picking up in Plato's Republic, Book 2, and continuing the question of why try to be a good person, period. If you can be a bad person, why not get away with it, if you can. Uh, and last time, we were looking at Glaucon continuing his devil's advocate argument for why people only follow the rules and you know obey laws due to their inability to uh, escape them with impunity. And he introduced the Ring of Gyges, which is an invisible ring he thought would inevitably corrupt uh, people. That if you could do this, there would be no one who would uh, fail to utilize it to self selfish advantage. Uh, and it's worth thinking about Lord of the Rings. Right? I mean, J.R.R. Tolkien was a very scholarly man who very much knew the story he was playing off of. He was piggybacking. And if you know the story of the, uh, the Lord of the Rings, um, it basically stays with some hobbits for the entirety of it. And uh, they use it to a certain extent, but I wouldn't say it completely corrupts them. I think in the end we view the hobbits with, like, a great deal of honor and integrity and morality. Um, so it's an interesting, you know, while we work through this, because I think Glaucon's argument here is pretty, it's dangerously compelling, we'll say that. It's dangerously compelling. Uh, and so at the end of it, it's worth just reflecting on J.R.R. Tolkien's spin on things, whether it's such a ring would really corrupt. Because we see what happens to Gollum, Lord of the Rings. Anyway, Picking up, he goes on to say, all right, not only have I made a case for the origin and nature of justice and the reason why people do it um, due to their inability to not to uh, escape impunity and break laws um, using the ring of Gyges. He goes on to say, and I think this is a very fascinating theory, you know, now, if we are to form a real judgment of the life of the just and unjust, we must isolate them. There must, there's no other way. And how is the isolation to be effected? I answer, let the unjust man be entirely unjust, and the just man entirely just. Nothing is to be taken away from either of them, and both are to be perfectly furnished for the work of their respective lives. So he's like, all right, we're making like almost hyperbolic statues, right, larger than life. The, the most perfectly evil, unjust, corrupt person, and the most perfectly just person. Right? First, let the unjust be like other distinguished masters of craft, like the skillful pilot or physician who knows intuitively his own powers and keeps within their limits, and who, if he fails at any point, is able to recover himself. So let the unjust make his unjust attempts in the right way and lie hidden if he means to be great in his injustice. He who is found out is nobody. So he's saying, you know, the most perfect criminal, if they slip up, if they, like, miss a beat, if they screw up something, they can always adjust, right? They're good enough, they can, like, think on their feet, and they don't get, they don't get caught, right? Because for he must lie hidden if he means to be great in his injustice. He who is found out is nobody. For the highest reach of injustice, write this down, is to be deemed just when you are not. Therefore I say that in the perfectly unjust man we must assume the most perfect injustice. There is no deduction. But we must allow him, while doing the most unjust acts, to have acquired the greatest reputation for justice. So we're not talking about the street thugs with a long criminal rap sheet, right? We're talking about the people with immaculate records who sit in positions of judge or priestships, you know, when priests get found out to be pedophiles, or when, you know, the two-time, the two-year uh, Times Man of the Year, Adolf Hitler, turns out to be a psychopath. Uh, that was a miss. Swing and a miss, guys. Um, or Stalin, Man of the Year. I mean, you know, our rap sheet's long. Mao, come on now. Probably Kissinger would make the list. Uh, but this is the important part. The most perfectly evil person would look just 
all the while not being. So like a mafia don who looks like an upstanding person of the people and, the, you know, a good citizen really is just like putting cigarettes out in people's eyes like crime town, right? That mayor got reelected. <laughs> anyway. Uh, if he have taken a false step, he must be able to recover himself. He must be one who can speak with effect. If any of his deeds come to light and who can force his way where force is required, his courage and strength in command of money and friends. I do not have sexual relations with that woman, right? Never breaks. Never breaks. It's like, does anyone really think that that didn't happen? Are you, anyway. Uh, but we know Bill Clinton. We know the story. It's worth saying, like, even if you think he's guilty, right, because he probably did do it, uh, I would hold other things more against a person than sexual infidelity. It's not a good one, but uh, track record of our presidents, and impeachable offenses. Uh, but there's a portion, portion of the population who likes Bill more now after he rode that through and just, like, you know, didn't break, like, denied it, like, you know, hemmed his words. Uh... There's a portion of us who find it reprehensible and wretched, right? But are also secretly like, damn, he's a player. He got away with it. So this is the unjust man who looks just, yeah? Uh, in the back of your mind, you should think, can I think of real-life examples of people who looked really good and proper, and later it comes out they were just Jimmy Seville, Jerry Sandusky... Um, wasn't there just an Olympic trainer who got found out to be sexually assaulting dozens of girls over the years? Did that happen? By his side, we placed the most just person. Most people are kind of good, kind of bad, somewhere in the middle. The most just person, yeah? In his nobleness and simplicity, wishing, as Aeschylus says, to be and not to seem just. There must be no seeming. For if he seem to be just, he will be honored and rewarded. And we don't want him to be honored and rewarded because that would be doing something for the consequences, right? You look like a good person. If people will marry into your family, you'll get job opportunities, you'll be praised, prestige, right? And so, like, if a person's being good or just so that they get the benefits of being it, they're doing it consequentially, right? Which is just Glaucon's argument. He wants to see justice praised in and of itself, right? So he's like the just person who'd rather be, rather than seem just. I'd rather be just than seem just. Glaucon's like, I'd rather seem just and actually be, like, crooked as all anything, right? Therefore, let him be clothed in justice only, and have him and have no other clother, covering. Okay. Let him be clothed in justice only, and have no other covering. And he must be imagined in a state of life the opposite the former. Let him be the best of men, and let him be thought the worst. Then he will have been put to the proof, and we shall see whether he will be affected by the fear of infamy and its consequences. Let him continue thus to the hour of death, being just and seeming to be unjust. When both have reached their uttermost extreme, the one of justice and the other of injustice, let judgment be given which of them is the happier of the two. Yeah, seriously. Story of Jesus best of intentions, good man, thought the worst. They freed, you know, horrible people rather than killed Jesus, right? The blood, bloodthirsty mob. Uh, Socrates was put to death by the people of Athens thinking he was a horrible, you know, like, how oh, dare you ask how we should live and question things, impeding to the gods and corrupting the youth. Uh, and there have been other people who have done the right thing and only gotten, you know, bad consequences for it. I'd like, you should think, you should stop and think for a minute, what, have you ever done the right thing and just got thrown under the bus? Just nothing good happened. I know someone who ended up in jail as a sexual predator for trying to do the right thing as a high school teacher, and all the, like, teenage girls who were dating guys in their 20s all lied and said that he was sexually, you know, assaulting and, you know, pushing on them so that they wouldn't get in trouble. Do, do teenagers lie? Hmm. 
Uh, anyway, like, did the right thing, tried to, like, stand up, knew underage girls were having sex with adults, and is now a sexual predator for life on the records, right? You think that's, you think he feels good about doing that for its own sake, doing the right thing, right? Or does he wish he just held his tongue and, you know, let people live their own life? Okay. Mm -hmm. And so... They will tell you that the just man who is thought unjust, the person who's really just for its own sake, not for its consequences, Galileo, people lived in persecution during their own lifetime, that person will be scourged, racked, bound, will have his eyes burnt out, and at last, after suffering every kind of evil, he'll be impaled. Then he will understand that he ought to see only and not to be just. You know, like a William Wallace, some fights to free their country and just uh, does not have it go fine, right? Would they still, looking back, feel good about having done what they thought was right the whole way through? Is Julian Assange and Edward Snowden and Bradley Manning, Chelsea Manning, are they all, like, happy having, like, stood up for their values, having their lives just ruined, families thrown into, you know, just all the stuff that falls out from that? Are they, like, comfortable having done it? Would they, like, you know, wish they'd just shut up and gone along with the system? Right? You're going to be put in a situation like this where you got to decide, are you going to, are you going to do what's right, come hell or high water, regardless of the consequences, or are you going to like just follow orders and just go along to get along? And, you know, it's worth thinking about. Am I doing it for the consequences, or is there inherent value in just doing what the hell you know is right, regardless? Irregardless is not a word. So, back to the unjust man. Ooh, the best. Maybe, if you think it's real. Or she, heaven forbid. His mind has a soil deep and fertile, out of which spring his prudent counsels. In the first place, he is thought just, and therefore bears rule in the city. He can marry whom he will, and give in marriage to whom he will. Also, he can trade and deal where he likes, and always to his advantage, because he has no misgivings about injustice, and at every contest, whether in public or private, he gets the better of his antagonists, and gains at their expense, and is rich. And out of his gains, he can benefit his friends and harm his enemies. That used to be the classic definition of a good man, someone who can benefit his friends and harm his enemies. That was, like, what it was. And Socrates came along and changed the world. He's like, no, no, no. I believe it's far better to suffer in injustice than it is to deal in injustice on another. Because he believed in the immortality of the soul, etc., etc. But conversation for another day. But if you're rich, you can benefit your friends and harm your enemies. You can offer sacrifices and dedicate gifts to the gods abundantly and magnificently. In a far better style than the just. And thus it is. And thus it is. But, almost there. Once more, Socrates, I will ask you to consider another way of speaking about justice and injustice. The universal voice of mankind is always declaring that justice and virtue are honorable, but grievous and toilsome, and that the pleasures of vice and injustice are easy of attainment, but are only censored by law and opinion. They say also that honesty is for the most part less profitable than dishonesty, and they are quite ready to call wicked men happy, and to honor them both in public and private when they are rich, or in any other way influential, while they despise and overlook those who may be weak and poor, even though acknowledging them to be better than the others. Is that still true? Are we always declaring that justice and virtue, being a good person, are honorable, admirable, but grievous, toilsome, difficult to acquire, right? And pleasures of vice, injustice, are easy of attainment and only censored by law of opinion, right? We know there's wicked people out there who are happy, and we know there's wretched, poor people who are probably better humans than we are, right? But we kind of like, and we you know, admire them, but kind of look down on them too. And even if you know someone's rich and disgusting, like if the Koch brothers walked in the school, I bet you you'd go look at them, just be like, you know, you just want to see, 
What, what do they look like? What is, what's, what's going on in that world? It seems like a different world. Can I, by justice or by crooked ways of deceit, ascend a loftier tower, which may be a fortress to me all my days? What's the best way to, like, protect yourself in this world? Is it by honesty and integrity? Consistency with what you say and what you do and what you value, right? A rare thing. Or is it just by not getting caught? We just tell people when they're young, be a good person. But like, you know, do you always tell the truth? I bet you don't. I guarantee you don't. I would put my bottom, 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 bottom dollar on you can't. Go read Le Misanthrope, right? Moliere got it. You can't, you can't be entirely honest. You get locked up or ostracized. And so, lastly, well, I wanted to find, where's the section? says, ah, but I hear someone exclaiming that the concealment of wickedness is often difficult, to which I answer, nothing great is easy. So he's saying, all right, in theory you're saying someone could be so corrupt, so wicked, all the while maintain the appearance of justice, right? That would be a good, upstanding citizen. He's saying, they would get caught, right? It would come out. No one's that good, right? It would, someone would find out. And he says, well, with a view to concealment, we will establish secret brotherhoods and political clubs, Council of Foreign Relations, I don't know if the Bilderberg Group counts, Trilateral Commission, Council of Rome, <coughs> and there are professors of rhetoric who teach the art of persuading courts and assemblies. And so partly by persuasion, partly by force, I shall make unlawful gains and not be punished. So, that's a long section, but do we have political clubs, secret organizations that members seem to be a part of who escape retribution? Maybe we do. Some would say, yeah, of course we do, right? Go, go you know, think on it. Do your own. Don't, don't swallow anything I say. I'm just a person. And think about, are these realistic? Can we think of anyone who we know appeared to be a good person much of their life? Turns out they were a really bad person. Right? Let's make a list. Can we think of anyone who appeared to be a bad person much of their life and turned out they were a really good person? Later on, we had to posthumously, uh, you know, acknowledge them. Is it worth doing the right thing for its own sake? even if you don't get the consequences. Ideally, you do the right thing, you're good, you keep your promises, and you get the perks of it, right? People are good to you, and you, you have a good life as a result of it. Sometimes, though, people do the right thing, and it doesn't go well for them, right? They stand up for their values, and they get run over by the system, right? Um, what's the inherent value of doing the right thing? Is there some? Or are you just persuaded by Glaucon? You're like, damn, now that I think of it, I just don't really care about being a, trying to be a good person, right? I'm just going to, like, play the game and be selfish, practical, you know, get a lie when I can, whatever, whatever. Or if, you know, you're somehow, and hopefully this is, I hope this is where you are, but I want to put meat on the bone, right? you got to, like, actually grapple with this. Uh, even against this, is there something in the back of your, your brain, your consciousness, that's just like, no, even as convincing and realistic as this is, I would rather try to be a good person, come hell or high water, because it feels better, it resonates more, I can live a truer, more authentic, genuine life. Do you want to be a shill? Do you want to be just a weather vane turning in whatever circumstances need without any inner compass or integrity or um, rudder? Is that the one? Anyway, you get it. So, uh, thus we will continue looking at um, how we do moral reasoning.
right? Now that the now that the the hook's been baited, right? If you want to be a good person, well, we got to figure out a good way to do it, right? We need a human thinking is prone to error, yeah. So we need some kind of a system or standard to measure good and bad thinking with. And this is where we will pick up next time. Thank you and have a great day.